Did you hear that voicemail we got the other day? The, the, with the breathing and sort and of the, the creepy vibe yeah, and the, sort of the <gasps> yeah the <gasps> wheeze at the, at the uh, it unsettled me it was disturbing yeah yeah. Uh, it was me I was lonely it was late did you lose your keys mm, I lost more than that Fanboy, the weekly comic book discussion video show. I am Josh Flanagan. I'm Ron Richards. I'm Connor Kilpatrick. And at the end of every show, we always tell you to call our voicemail line or write an email. We tell you on this show, we tell you on our audio show. We usually do our, that stuff on the audio show every week. There's always email and voicemail we respond to. We and you can hear the audio show at iFanboy.com. Yep. You can subscribe to it. It's in iTunes. If you're not listening to the audio show, go listen to it. Yeah, so every week we do that stuff. So you may have been calling in all this time thinking, why don't they ever answer? And then we've been doing it on the audio show. But Turns out you weren't listening to the audio show. Your fault. There's also our weekly letters column on the website. We also take your emails. But also, every once in a while, every three or four months, we decide to do a show where we answer voicemails and emails. Here, right here, so live. We have some live it's on totally tape. raw, unedited. We're on, raw. We're on the spot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, raw Ron's, shape. Ron's compiled them. We don't know what's coming. It's always a fun time to see how much little we know. On Happy our fun own. time. Yes. How much little? How much little we know. Okay, so we're going to start with an email. Ooh, okay. All right. Emails comes from Eric White. I just have a hard, hard time with the last names. I feel bad. Eric wrote White. in. Well, no. I just said all the first yeah. names. Eric nice. wrote in and said, I was wondering if you think there will ever be a DC Marvel crossover again. If there was one, who or what team would you like to see crossover and who would they fight? My pick would be Booster Gold and Ant-Man, Eric O'Grady, versus AIM and MODOK and Ultra Humanite. Sure. It's very specific. Or, yeah. or both She-Hulks, Power Girl, and Supergirl versus Poison Ivy controlling Ms. Marvel, Valkyrie, Wonder Woman, and Wonder Girl. I feel like that's he's just a porn. I feel, like, that's just a... I feel like he's written this. Yeah, <laughs> like, like he's like because the oh, either that or you're going for deep cuts. Yeah. He, he, like you really want to see Superman. If fight the answer Batman. to the first question is yes, he's got the treatment ready. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, um, it, it, funny you should like, mention. I feel like there's the assumption that the, so the last great Marvel DC crossover was, well was the Justice League Avengers crossover. Yes. Mm-hmm. But before that was the Marvel vs. DC series, mm-hmm. which was pitting characters against each other. Yep. That doesn't necessarily mean that what ha- that's what has to happen. Yeah. They don't have to fight each other. Well, and, and then the, the, the legend, the story goes that, I think it was Bob Wayne at DC said, we'll never do another crossover again while Joe Quesada is in the editor-in-chief chair. Well, yeah. for those of you who've been following, Joe Quesada is no longer in the editor-in-chief chair. He's just behind it in a bigger office. <laughs> yeah, I still He's got a bigger chair. Personally, I don't, think, I don't think with the current corporate climate mm-hmm. yeah. I don't, and, the, and the movies, heating, the competition heating up, I don't think we will ever see another crossover for a long time. It's I, interesting. I, I can't I, see Disney being like, yeah, let's help the other. But, you know, but the problem is, is that if you're, if you're on Twitter and you're following the creators, maybe about six months ago, do you remember the little dance that Bendis mm-hmm. Fraction and Jeff Johns got in about yeah. an Iron Man Green Lantern crossover? Yeah. That, and Jeff Johns, if someone can Make push it, it through, yeah. it's him. Yeah, so. yeah but I, th- I think that, and this is the, the sort of scary, ugly part of it, is that there's just so much licensing and contracts involved, and every one of those characters has contracts attached to him, and this guy owns a little piece of it, and this owns a little piece of it, or this. Yeah. You know, not so much Superman, but, but even that. You know, actually, um, you know, it's, it's illegal. Like, it's just really worth. I'm it. not going to say never, but it's unlikely for a while. I don't, I don't if, if ever. Well, as long, I think it's, I think the Casada thing. He's still in, in the company. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I think so. that's a big deal for too. The thing, yeah. and the thing is, I think if you're going to do it, uh, you know, that that JLA Avengers, those are the. I mean, you need to do a JLA and Avengers. You really, you need to do like those are the. Or big, a single character kind. Of yeah. Yeah, but you can, even that you can't. Well, there's the whole Batman movies. Daredevil and the Bendis is wanting to write forever. They've been yeah. talking about forever, which mm-hmm. I think if they do do it, that would be the thing that would probably That's happen. The first one, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So thank you, Eric. Uh, let's let's hear a voicemail. All right. All right. Here you go. Hey guys, this is Dave calling from the District of Columbia. Uh, quick question for you. Um, trying to think of comic characters that can read other people's minds and uh, draw a blank. Hoping you guys could help me out. Thanks. Ron, do you know any? <laughs> I know several, in fact. Uh, Professor Xavier? Yes. Psylocke? Yes. Jean Grey? Deadpool. Emma? Deadpool can't read minds. Isn't he telepathic? No. no. I thought he was. No. Remember when he said much little earlier? Emma Frost. Emma Frost, uh, the Cuckoos. John Jones. Uh, John Jones. Um, I'm DC. sorry, you know what I was Marsh thinking Man Hunter? I was thinking of Hitman. I don't know how I got those mixed up, but I was. <laughs> Can Hitman read? Is Hitman that? Yes. Oh, so Hitman. But that's DC. Yeah, we're doing DC. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comic characters. Yeah, yeah, no, Hitman's telepathic, and it's, it's like that little extra power that he has. Yeah. yeah. Where you're like, that's weird. Hitman has a good, good book. It was. Who else is telepathic? 
and he has X-ray eyes, and he can say he's telepathic. Uh, uh, I'm sure who cares? Miss Martian, because she's also a Martian, I assume okay. she is as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Jones is. No, oh, absolutely. Oh, you're right. You're right. He, he created the, a telepathic. The coolest thing Morse did was the telepathic. The link communication system. Yeah, 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 yeah. Aquaman's not. No, he's just telepathic with the fish. With the fish. So it's just fish. Yeah. Just fish. well, it, that counts. He yeah, didn't also specify. Also, undersea doctor. Pardon. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else? That's a good question. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to expand. They're not a ton. Yeah. Because I love that power. Love yeah, that but power. it's it's kind of a game changer. Oh, like yeah, totally. like once you're doing that, then then what's left? Yeah. You know, like don't think of that thing. But that, we just have like eight. Yeah, so that's, that's a lot. That's yeah. So when you write your DC Marvel crossover, well, assuming everyone's right, pitching, yeah. getting rid of pitch. All right. All right. So our next email comes from Corey, who says, "I just got back into comics a month ago." And I wanted to catch up on my favorite superheroes, Spider-Man, Batman, and Green Lantern. My question is, what current storyline for each comic, i.e. Batman equals Detective Comics, Batman Inc., Batman, Batman, and Robin, is worth going back to read and buy the trade paperback? Okay, and this is actually a fairly specific question. He's saying what... He doesn't... I mean, current storyline and trade paperback, those are sort of at odds. So, maybe you're talking about Green Lantern, really... Where do you start with Green Lantern? Oh. Yeah, that's why I was like. Go to Google and type in where do you start with Green Lantern? I can't Give everything you need. Dude, no, yeah. you don't even need to write I can't Okay. <laughs> Number one, win, baby. Win. I'm telling you, that is, a, that is an SEO gold mine. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the summer. Like, yes. Oh. I'm going to put a big ad on that page, people. Anyway, uh, but if you were to look at, at Green Lantern, if you want to make it easier on yourself, you could go back and read Green Lantern Secret Origin and uh, Green Lantern uh, the, the Blackest Night, yeah. the books. That'll pretty much get you where you need to be. Spider-Man, you're lucky in that the past couple of years they've consolidated it to just Amazing Spider-Man. So mm-hmm. go get Brand New Day, Grim Hunt. Are those any numbered? Do you know, do you I don't know if they're numbered. I don't think they're numbered. But pretty much any Amazing Spider-Man for the last three years, you'll be good. Well, the thing is, if you want to hop on the current Spider-Man, you've only got to go back a couple of issues yeah. Yeah. to get what's happening now. And you'll be fine because they just sort of do a little yeah, epoch so change. Yeah, recent, recent the dance status quo change. Yeah, get the big, big time? Get the big time Big issues. time. Yeah, yeah. What, what is the new Batman title? Batman Inc. Batman. Is it Batman Inc.? Batman Inc. There's a Batman Inc. logo on the new Batman book. So if you look for those, well, just like Spider Man, it's only been a few months. But if you were going to go back, someone I just I just got back from from traveling to space, and now I'm I want to read Batman. I, I what do I need to catch up? I don't what? like to know about space first. Uh, no, <laughs> about space. Yeah, he's not wrong about that. <laughs> Why were you? Did you? How did that? Because you have a Chrysler, <laughs> and I don't think that. Uh, no, uh, if I were you, I would get the Batman and Robin collections yes. uh, by Grant Morrison collections. and various artists. What about um, the Return of Bruce Wayne? Yes, you yes. could, but yeah, you don't. Have, if if you like it. that type of story, which is more Silver Age type mm-hmm. travel story. What about Final Crisis? No, you don't need to. You, know, so you don't need to, to, to enjoy those. You don't need to have read those. Okay. And even even Return of Bruce Wayne, you don't really need. Yeah, but if you want to read what's going on now and you want to just go with the issues, it's only in a few months. No, but he wants straight paperback. So. Okay, fine, but yeah. that's fine. I'm just also trying to read the email. Well, no, 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 I don't. You, okay. I got it. All right, fine. Still peak. He has he has other windows. Batman right. and Robin. What? No, 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 no. <laughs> Ma. Batman and Robin and Return of Bruce Wayne. And then Ronald tells us about space later. I guess. All right. Yes, later. All right. Up next is another <laughs> is another voicemail. Shush. Hey guys, this is Jeff from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Jay Wesh on the site. I've just got a quick question for you concerning uh, Jim Starlin, and hoping to get some opinions and maybe a recommendation. I recently read um, Rebirth of Thanos, which I actually loved, and. Uh, um, now I'm, I'm on in stock trades here, trying to decide what to go with next, uh, as far as Jim Starlin is concerned. I've narrowed it down to um, either the end uh, from Marvel, Infinity Gauntlet, or Cosmic Odyssey. Uh, I was just wondering your thoughts and opinions on those, and uh, if you could help me make a very difficult decision. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Bye. He's had that. He's had that window open. Well, yeah, he's, like, he's, he's been there the whole time. He's right? been sitting there in front of Instock Trades, he's like <laughs> beard growing. Um, Jim Starlin's one of the, one of our favorite creators. He's fantastic. You name you named the you name the two that you need to get, which are Infinity Gauntlet first yep. and Cosmic Odyssey after that. Now he wrote Infinity Gauntlet. He didn't draw it. No, that was right. George Perez and Ron Lim. Right. So when, just to be clear, when George Perez yeah. couldn't finish it. Yeah. And then Cosmic Odyssey, he wrote, but Mike Mignola drew. Right. So mm-hmm. if you're looking for art from Jim Starlin, those are but two great Jim Starlin stories. The recent thing he did for DC, like a he did a bunch of cosmic books the, uh, with Adam Strange yeah. and Starfire and Animal Man. I feel like and those Hawkman. were good. Mm-hmm. The, the first one was definitely good. Yeah. I, I started my interest sort of petered out as they 
the more they came out and I stopped, eventually stopped buying them. But yeah. um, he's Starlin's great. He writes great cosmic stuff, which, yeah. which is Infinity Gauntlet by far. I mean, Cosmic Odyssey is great, but I, mean, I, I fall on Marvel. But like Infinity Gauntlet is like I think they're both defining. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We did a Vault Show. We talked and about before at, but both we talked about Cosmic Odyssey. And yeah, we have Infinity yeah. Gauntlet. But before Abnett Lanning, really, this Marvel Cosmic guy was Starlin. Jim Starlin, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Cool. All right, our next e- uh, email comes from Joshua. Why won't you love me, Death? Not you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it took him a beat to get what you're saying. <laughs> so uh, Joshua writes in and says, With the recent overwhelming success of The Walking Dead show on AMC, should we expect networks to look into bringing more television adaptations of comics? Any early predictions as to which comics might possibly be pursued to adaptation? Wonder Woman. Oh wait, <laughs> I, I would say that's a pretty safe bet. Yeah, I think I think definitely I think it's um, similar to the the moment that we saw with X Men and Spider Man, mm-hmm. you know, superhero movies becoming good, then getting this this waterfall. Of well, the thing to understand about movies. Hollywood is they follow the trend, blood right. in the water, because right. it's easier for a development exec to claim failure when they follow a popular trend than to go on their own and their own thing. Right. So they. So that you have a couple <laughs> deep and cynical. Well, yeah. no, it's true. It's true. true. I work in development. So the so the the thing is, Walking Dead was popular. You're going to see these shows. I yeah. wonder if that translates to superhero though. You're going to see both. I think. Yeah, because well, I mean the thing is, you know, we had we had a giant hit with with heroes, but it didn't necessarily. Although now we are seeing the I think, Cape and and the No Ordinary Family, and they were still okay. Um, yeah. Wonder Woman was. Was picked up by well, NBC. We, there's a whole bunch of stuff already in development on the superhero side. So there's a new Hulk series in development. There's a um, there's the, the Jessica Alias, Jones, the Alias Jessica one. Show. There's there a Woman one. Yeah, one. And there was Woman. a Fables TV show in development at one well, point. I, I think, I, I think it's important to remember development doesn't equal you're gonna ever see it. By yeah. the way, I was gonna say I think um, um, you're gonna see non superhero stuff. Powers is in development. Rest from Top Cow is uh-huh. in development. Yeah. Um, you're, and then you're going to see Chew got optioned. Mm-hmm. Um, did Astro City option for a movie or a series? Movie. Cause, movie. Because an Astro City series would be pretty cool. But yeah, they they'd never yeah, get away with it. Yeah, like you're going to see the non-superhero, I think Why the Last Man, yeah. Runaways, things like that. But again, that. again, just yeah. emphasize, development, Does optioning mean, doesn't mean you're going to see anything. But, and, I, and I got a, we got another email about this. We talked about this before. Somebody asked about Preacher the other day. Never going to see Preacher. Yeah. It's but been also, just in development hell for so long. But also, not only did the networks want it, the companies want it. Yeah. Disney bought Marvel for the film and movie rights, not the comics. Disney, DC Entertainment is trying to match that, and they're yeah. really pushing shows. They, it, they want. There's going to be a lot of cartoons. There's going to be a lot of shows coming out. Everybody on the independent side, all the image they're going to see what Kirkman's been doing, and they're yeah. gonna, they want to do that. I mean, honestly, I think Chew probably is the best bet of the most Walking Dead esque one to become a TV series. Yeah, I can see yeah. Chew on AMC. I'd love, yeah. I'd love like a Fear Agent series. How awesome oh, that would be! Great. That would be awesome, right? It'll be interesting to see. If you know, the thing is, if, if you can do it. Doctor Who, if, if the yeah. BBC can do Doctor Who with not a stellar budget, Fox and Firefly, which is yeah. almost the which same, is, yeah. it's, it's the same aesthetic. Yeah. 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 So. Cool. Fury Joe would be that awesome. Would be Fury awesome. would be awesome. Yeah. Anyway. I think it's going to be a movie, not a series. Though. Yeah, but I love a series. That'd be great. All right, here's like our next voicemail. Stumbling boozy around. <laughs> All right, next voicemail. Shush. Hey, guys. This is Matt from Long Island, and it was nice to meet you guys at the New York Comic Con this year. Just was wondering if you guys were ever fans of Spider-Man 2099 or any of the other 2099 books. This was feeling a little nostalgic about it today, kind of flipping through, and it I think it may hold up, but I'm not sure. So just curious if you guys had any uh, feelings or opinions on that. Thanks. Bye. So the 2099 series, which for those who don't know, in the early 90s... Before my time. Um, Marvel, it was like 94? Around there, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Marvel did an event, did a line. They, they left a whole new line of 2099 books where they took the characters now and said, what would these characters be like in the year 2099? Yep. So we had uh, Spider-Man 2099... We had, I don't know if you remember all these, and I don't know if I Doom. Remember. We had X-Men 2099. Yep. We had Doom 2099. Venom? And Ravage 2099. Ravage 2099. And Ravage was written by Stan, Stan Lee. Lee. Right. Um, I don't remember who wrote the other ones. I remember. Warren Ellis wrote Doom. Really? Yep. Oh, shit. And Spider-Man was Peter David and our friend Rick Leonardi. And I, I don't remember who wrote X-Men, but I know. Oh, you? But I, know, I love 2099. Yeah, books. but I know, the, I know the artist on 2099 was Ron Lynn. Yes, and after reading him on Infinity Gauntlet, I was like, I was all over it, and I loved X Men Twenty Nine Nine. Those were great books. Yeah, uh, Ravage was probably the first time I realized perhaps that Stanley's style was best left in the sixties. Interesting. He's uh, an idea, man. Um, but I still read it. I enjoyed it. Spider Man was great. I love Spider Man. I'm afraid to go back and read it though because right, it sounds like John it's Francis over time. Moore wrote X-Men 2099. Mm. The line ran from 93 to uh, 96. It was uh, short. 35, short. 30 and, issues or so. And yeah. Thomas Moore was executed by Henry VIII. Yep. I have nothing to add. Yeah, no, they were fun. I don't know if, I don't know if I'd read them again, though. 
Among yeah. the best left in. I think it was best left in the time. Although X-Men 99, I did like those characters. So. But Spider-Man was cool. He was, uh, he was all Very kind cautious. of progressive. He was half Latino, half Irish. So at the time, there wasn't a lot of non-white characters. He was... Yeah. Or great. Irish. Lyric Leonardi was great. Yeah. It was a great artist. Great actually. costume. Yeah, great, great, costume. great costume. And if you like video games, uh, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions has X-Men 29 yep. in it. Yeah. Peter Spider-Man. David was a writer. He was a, he was a yeah. huge writer at the time. Yeah. He's still being a writer, but he was like, in the early 90s, that was his time. Yeah. Physically, just <laughs> presence now. He had Hulk, he had Aquaman, he had... I'm he had not X-Men. touching that one. No, no, no. I like Peter David. Okay. Our next email comes from Eric from Shanghai, China. All the way. Oh. From China. Yikes. Is, oh, wait, is this okay? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Okay. We have no gold to sell you. I'm sorry, Hu Jintao. One of Ron's... Yeah, oh, shit, he's talking about me. <laughs> One of Ron's comments about Wizard on a recent show made me think about a question that I've debated with my girlfriend for some time. What are your thoughts on reading materials in the bathroom? <laughs> are you Seinfeld-minded in your aversion to perusing comics, etc., while occupied? Or do you enjoy a lengthy stretch in the loo with your favorite books? Just curious. Keep up the good show. So everyone out there right now is about to find out what we think of reading while we shit. And I, look at look at this. Look I don't want to answer these questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring anything into the bathroom. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, mean, I have no, I have no, like, I don't need to keep the comics clean. Ironically, I, I read Wizard under the bathroom. Well, that's what's why he said. That's why I brought it up. Yeah, yeah, appropriate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, now. <laughs> Wizard and Entertainment Week, we get the majority of my bathroom reading. I'll bring a trade in. I'll bring an issue in. If I, it's Wednesday night, I got yeah. pick of the week. Yeah. I don't want to waste any time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's the only place where it's quiet in his apartment. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's the only place where a man can find some privacy. And some peacefulness. A little time yeah. to himself. Yeah. Connor? I don't think I don't have like a rule against it. I don't do it like uh, I don't keep stuff in the bathroom to read. Right, but I, I keep like, magazines. In the I, I'm, we have a rack. You yeah. have a lot of room on either side. No, anyway, no. that's getting yeah. Yeah. very specific. Uh, Small so yes, I guess there's a question. There's an answer. We, if this gets me, it. here's the thing though: you don't want us to get stuck in there with something with a lot of words in it because you'll get hemorrhoids. If this gets me in any trouble with the Chinese consulate, <laughs> just saying. He named you. He named me. Also, he named like names. Gold for uh, Niho Ma. All right, so on to our next voicemail. Fine, thank you. <laughs> Here you go. Hey, this is John from uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, John Thrax on the on the iFan Voice site. Um, I was wondering what you guys think about what it seems to me that there's uh, quite an increase in attendance on comic conventions, uh, at least in the last couple of years or so, yet um, the comic industry itself seems to be are obviously, uh, you know, going downhill. Why do you think there's so many people, um, but yet there, those same people don't seem to be at least uh, buying comics? Uh, do you think it's just the, um, you know, the, the, the many different things that the comic conventions offer, or what? Thanks, guys. Bye. It's the twenty four thousand dollar question, it's right a there. Very good question. I mean, I think I think a large part. I think I think several things. A large part of it is that it's a local event. Yes. And that, and that many people in cities are. All, believe it or not, I, I'm packed on the weekends. I never have a free moment. But apparently, there are people who are looking for things to do. Wow. Yeah. What's and, that like? Yeah, I know. I would like to know that. But and they they just go, and which is cool. But then the, the, but the, then the, there's the wrestlers. Well, I was going to say the other draw really is it's more bigger than that. It's, it's celebrity and. Yeah. There's no power. There's no cult. There's no force more powerful in our culture today than celebrity. Yep. I, and, and that explains San Diego. But this explain New York. But there, well, no, all, levels, all levels. All oh, levels. Because really hey, well. hey, there is a lot of people in the New York metro area given the opportunity to meet Roddy Roddy Piper will go wait in line no, in the we, Hotel Pennsylvania. The thing is, That's when true. when you read the the. The New York Comic Con thing, like we read the comic book part, but everybody else looks at the entertainer part and they no, go. No, there's not a lot of entertainment stuff in New York. Comic but there's it, celebrity, celebrity, celebrity to, to a lot of people. Not everyone's nearly as jaded. It, like you yeah, know, we're jaded. You know, th- there's that sort of BC level celebrity. There's somebody who was in that sci-fi show you like. There's somebody. They people love celebrities. Remember C two E two with the lines for that autograph, the autograph yeah, session. Sure, I yeah. mean, like that's the thing. I mean, it's like I think the the allure of celebrity and the allure of something to do, someplace to go, and it's a great opportunity for comics to expose them um, to the to these fans. Except but it doesn't because yeah, it's the same thing. Where comics keep marketing and and dressing themselves for long time readers. Right. And and they don't know how to, and they don't really try to capture those other readers that often. Because if they did, their their existing market would revolt, yeah, and yeah. then they they lose their base. That's the catch too. That's it the problem. Is. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, people say, it's funny, because it's the same thing, you know, from 2000, we've seen huge movies over and over again, and people always say, well, why don't they just give out comics at the movie? It wouldn't make a difference. People yeah. aren't going to read those things. I mean, I bet they get a few people who start reading comic books, but... They you, get a significant, not significant number of people. People yeah. would, they get like a handful, but I, not Yeah, I do have to admit, I, I was... I was it's obs- quick. I was observing at New York Comic Con, and part, partially because we had a booth at New York Comic Con, and I actually found myself stuck at another, at a table for a while. Um, <laughs> Rick um, but I, what I found was there are more people walking around wide-eyed and slack-jawed because they just showed up and they don't know what they're seeing yeah. than there were people who knew what they were looking for. Another thing. You know, like that, you, they get that spaced look yeah. where they're just, they've got a kid and they're just like walking around, yeah. you know, and like an- an- Another thing is people love free shit. Yes. And yeah. and they go to that and they just get handed free shit. And I think, I don't, I don't, want, all, I don't want all that crud, but... Like, yeah. People get that big bag, and, and they, they throw it in there, they leave there, you know, they, pro- they probably, you know, probably will never buy a comic book or follow up in any of those things. Yeah. They might look at them, and I bet a couple do. The point is, there's lots of things going on. Yes. So there's lots mm-hmm. of different reasons why people go. Yep. They call for it a comic comics Con. for celebrity, for, I mean, San Diego, San Diego pop culture convention is really more accurate to yeah. the title. Well, that's what they're all becoming. They're all becoming yeah. pop culture. And San Diego is almost at this point, it's a... Feature film and television marketing extravaganza yeah. is yes. what it is more than anything. Now, yeah. yeah, but I mean, when does that stop though? How many bombs do they need for? Like, not, how many, not for bombs. <laughs> I mean, cinematic bombs. <laughs> First, China. <laughs> how, many, <laughs> how many bombs was I set off in San Diego Comic Con? I'm gonna get visited by the FBI. Yes, <laughs> FBI. <laughs> How many bombs at the box office did they need before they stopped oh, marketing? I see. <laughs> because it, because it, it's all smoke and mirrors. That's it's I mean. all the yeah. comic books get by on saying, look at the look at the attendance at San Diego Comic Con. Comic books yeah. are getting huge, and yeah. then people invest or do whatever, and then it's the same thing. You go to the movie, you go to the the comic, and you make a big splash there, and that pushes your project through. It's amazing to see what happened with San Diego What's and with the, some of the other conventions, how they all got twisted into one another. Where like San Diego became this thing, and people going, hey, look, comics are huge. And then the video game people are going, well, I want to get to that audience, so I'm going to go there. I'm going to pump more money into it. And then the TV people are saying, well, I want to get those well, TV. You know, you know the interesting story is like Tron, is that they brought a test clip of Tron. Before Tron got made even... because of San Diego. Yes, Comic-Con's right. Exactly. reaction yep. and it bombed the box office. Yep. Exactly. So, but it doesn't matter what the real world reaction is. They can look at that as a measurable thing and say, look at the reaction it got. And any development executive is going to go, well, that, that's a real thing. Well, that's what I mean. How long until they realize there's nothing behind it? I don't, I don't think they will because that's I think will. that's just the machine. Yeah. I don't know. How many Scott Pilgrims and Trons do you need before well, the people stop having faith? Well, now I know not to go to any convention you're going to. So I'm wa- <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying, convention. if you can skip WonderCon this year... <laughs> it might be a good idea. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> also, watch your eyes. Yep. Because... <laughs> All right. One last email uh, from Sean, who says he's a fairly new reader, and Thor has always intrigued him, and more specifically, Ultimate Thor. He's an excellent character, and I figured out the disconnect between him and the 616 Thunderer, Donald Blake. Can't stand the guy. I think he takes away the interesting part of Thor, which is his interactions with mortals. With the upcoming Thor movie, books like Ultimate Thor and Thor the Mighty Avenger, it looks like editorial share my thoughts. I was just wondering how you feel about Don Blake. When I was he a, hates Don Blake. Yeah, I know. It's funny. When I was a kid, I thought Don Blake was really cool because I liked taking that huger than life character Thor and like making him into a guy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and I think that's neat. I, th- I yeah. think that, and there's a conflict there. There's like that um, firestorm conflict kind of thing yeah. going on. Two identi- yeah. where the needs of the one are, 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 are against the other one. That's the Kirk Spock. Yeah. That's yeah. The, the one that uh, remember. Well, no, but <laughs> that's Touch not what I was glass. talking about. Touch it. <laughs> remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, but I haven't read it. They still use Donald Blake I don't. I don't even consider Donald Blake. Cause I don't think Isn't he like old? Isn't he done? He's not, he's not part of the Thor yeah. story anymore. It's, like, right. it's been a while. So it's, yeah. it's I actually can't stand Ultimate Thor. Really? really? Yeah, I, can't say I think he's fascinating. I like all the, the Ultimate Thor miniseries. I like Ultimate Thor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the movie one looks like. But you know what they, they did with Ultimate Thor was he was he's different now than he was when he started. Yeah. He's not. Yeah. Is, no, he's not a is he a crazy environmentalist or has he really gotten that they just he's, he's is a he, god? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. No, no, they basically moved Ultimate Thor into Thor. Yeah. yeah. Territory so. with a big hammer axe thing. Yeah. But at the same time, I see what you're saying. I just, I feel like there's room for both stories. They did Donald Blake stories for a while. When I was like 12, there was Sigurd Jarlson, yeah. where he was like the guy with the ponytail. A Thunderstrike. Yeah. No, that's no, it was Thor. It was I swear, like that was that was Thor's secret identity for a little while because he's uh-huh. had different ones. Um, you know, they told those stories. They're going to tell ones there. He's and I, I like it. If you look at Thor: The Mighty Avenger, the fun part is that he doesn't have a secret identity. He's just like he's well, I'm a god. I'm stuck here. And that's kind of what it is now. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. how that, yeah. I don't think yeah. Donald Blake's a factor anymore. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I, Thor, I feel so. like I feel like he is, but I don't know. 
I should. We have a show. We're talking about well, it. I, I mean, what I'm saying is, I've read a bunch of Thor comics. I don't. I can't remember seeing Donald Blake in right. any time lately. So, like, he was. I think the, the Straczynski story. He, he was. Was he? Was yeah. Donald Blake in there? Yep. I, read, I didn't read that. But I read the, some of the Fraction story. Six sixteen. Donald Blake. No, while well, he looks it up. Yeah, he was in the he was in the Straczynski stories. I'm almost positive. But, I don't. Uh, I mean, I don't see as a problem. It's like it's like the Captain Marvel thing. You so, know, the, the Billy Batson angle makes it interesting. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Uh, Thor gave up his identity as Donald Blake. In fact, Odin transferred the enchantment, enabling Thor to change into mortal form and back from Thor's hammer to that of his ally and counterpart, Beta Ray Bill. So Beta Ray Bill's now Donald Blake. No, Beta Ray Bill can transfer. Oh, so yeah. Thor doesn't transfer him anymore. So yeah. no more Thor, adop- Thor adopted a new secret identity that of a construction worker, Sigurd Jarlson. In this identity, Thor did not actually become mortal, and Jarlson's identity he simply dressed as a mortal. He's put glasses on and put a ponytail. Put a ponytail. He had a yeah. mullet ponytail, yeah. too. Yeah. And the thing Sweet. is, I remember being 11 and going, that guy looks cool as hell. <laughs> I totally remember that. <laughs> so Donald Blake is not a factor anymore. His uh, alias is with Sigmund Siegfried, Dr. Donald Blake, Jake Olson, Sigurd Jarlson, and Eric Masterson. Eric, uh, wasn't Eric Masterson? He was on that 70s show, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I have no problem with Donald Blake, uh, but he's he's not affecting much. It's, it's all almost a moot point at this point. Yeah, Ron, no pro- no problems with Donald Blake. No problems. Donald. He's a licensed, trained, and trained physician and surgeon. So. That's nice. In what yeah. states? Uh, I don't know. In Kansas. Um, so yeah, so those are all emails and voicemails that we wanted to go through this uh, episode. So thank you for writing in and calling in, and you can do that. Get on a future show by emailing us contact at ifanboy dot com or calling the voicemail line at one eight 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 fanboys. It's one eight 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 three two six two six nine seven. Check out ifanboy dot com. You can comment on this show, but you can also find our weekly audio show, which we mentioned earlier, which is where we mostly do the emails and voicemails. We do those every week. We talk about the new books that come out. If you haven't heard that yet, what are you waiting for? Yep. It's so much fun. It's an hour a week. New comics and voicemails and emails and... We're good. Hilarity. Yeah, that's true. Often hilarity ensues. Thor, um, listen. <laughs> Thor, Thor won't tell you something. <laughs> Thor, also Donald Blake. And Donald not cool with this. <laughs> You'll have to listen to the show. I can't explain that to you. If you don't, what are you going to do? So Blake was in recently, but he was he separate. Just fell he, down the rabbit hole, he didn't fa- you? He found Mjolnir. And, um, <laughs> you can't say words. <laughs> well, you, you, said, you said eye laces before. What are eye laces? Well, it's supposed to be alias, but you said eye laces. <laughs> also, you can't say Asgard. Asgard. Or, or Singer Jolson. Singer yeah. Jolson. Archangel. Archangel. I could go on. Archangel. No. It's Archangel? Arch- yeah. Archangel. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even fake it. I don't like you. you. You've done nothing but ruin my work for years now. That's what you do. I know. I had to go for sexy. That's fine. I learned from Bobby.